Okay, so I've got my uh, openings done now with the curtain walls inserted. And what I've done, in case you're not in, in the class, is I've adjusted these sizes so that we've got now room for the awning to fit in properly. So you can use these dimensions that you can see there uh, and adjust the curtain wall size, but also the opening in these masonry walls. Uh, sorry, this one here. To have those uh, those dimensions that I can that you can see there. So now I want to put in the awning, which uh, again I just set up. So let's get to a different one. Well, you can see it there. So that's the awning we want to make. So I'm going to go to the here we go. This photo here, where you can see it a bit more clearly. Uh, so I'm just eyeballing it. Of course, I can't go up and measure this building, but by eye, to me, that looks like it's about 500 mil. And again, I think it's about a uh, 100 mil gap between the top of this opening and the awning. So that's all we need to know to be able to make it. Uh, so to make it easier for you, I'm going to put in a reference plane in this west elevation. I'm just going to draw a reference plane going across. I'm sorry, I'm going to take your screens over. So I'm just going to. Um, it's a very quick thing, so you don't need to repeat the steps while I'm doing it. It's a very quick thing. So I'm going to draw the reference plane going across uh, above the opening. And then you can see it isn't uh, giving me the dimension from the top of the opening. It's giving me a dimension from the ground floor level. But that's OK. We can do the maths and add this up. So that's 2,900, 500 plus 2,400. And then if we're coming up another 100 mil, then you'll see what I was planning the whole time. That's now a nice round number in this 3,000. So that is going to be the level that we use to place the awning, the uh, reference plane. So it's not a, bad idea to get to, uh, not a bad idea to give that a name. When you select any reference plane, you'll get this option there just to name them. So we'll call that awning base. So now I'm going to go to the level one floor plan. So this is the level above ground floor, of course. And to make it so that I can see what's below this level, I'm going to go into view properties, scroll down there and make sure I can find view range. Click edit. And I'm going to bring the bottom down uh, a thousand. I'm going to make this minus a thousand. And I'm going to make the view depth the same, minus a thousand. Click OK. And notice how these walls out the back have changed appearance. So essentially I've lowered the range uh, that we're working with. But notice how these doors don't come up differently. They're too low. But these walls here that go a bit higher, again, we can see those a bit more clearly now. Now, I don't mind that I can see these doors. If you don't want to see them, though, that's not from the view range. That's the underlay. So over here, you've got this underlay option. Notice how it's set to ground floor. So if I change that to none, I won't see those anymore. I'll still see these walls. But I don't mind, like I said, I don't mind having the doors set. We set that back to ground floor. And again, now I can see those things. This is more of a working view, so I don't need it to look beautiful uh, graphically, which it can't be. Okay, so to make my awning, again, I'm just going to use model in place. Uh, level one. So, okay, so we could use the roof tool to make this awning. But it's, again, it's a good chance to practice using model in place. So here, under component, I'll go to model in place. And I'm going to set the category, though, to roofs. So as far as Revit's concerned, this is still a roof. So I click OK. And let's call it what it is, Audi. OK, so then I'm going to make my extrusion. So I'm just going to click the extrusion button. But remember, I want it to go at the height of the reference plane that I've just named, not the level. So if you ever want to know where you're working, at what height or which plane, you'll see in properties. It tells you. 
So here, notice how it says the work plane is level one. We can go to set, and then here, in the list of names, notice I can choose awning base. So that's usually why you give names to your reference planes, so that you can choose them from the list. Oh, just up here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good one to remember that you'll see that set button comes up all the time. So if I click OK, now I can draw a rectangle. I'm just going to have a quick look at that photo again. Yeah, so I, again, I'm just doing this by eye. I'm, I'm going to say it's about 100 mil from either side coming in. Uh, so I don't have that point to click on, so I'm just going to use the rectangle tool and click on the edge of my wall and come down and lined up with the other edge at the bottom. I don't know how wide this awning is either, how far it comes out from the building. So let's see if we've got some other photos and we can get an idea. Probably about two metres, let's say. Okay, so I'm just cancelling everything so I can then select that line and then type in the measurement which I want, 2000. Probably even bigger actually, that looks a bit small. I know you might think two metres is a lot, but it's got these uh, these ties su to support it, so it can come out a fair way. So maybe two and a half metres. Yeah, for the time being, I'll see how it looks, but that, I think that's about right. Uh, so, then in the properties, we're going to change the extrusion end to 500. And I'm going to leave the material for now, just to remind you um, some of, the, of some of the issues you have when you're assigning materials to this sort of object, because uh, everyone has the same problem, you'll see. So if I finish this, I finish the extrusion. And if we go to the 3D view, we can see it. So then I'll finish it again. And of course, we want to still adjust that. And that's really what I wanted to focus on. Making it is pretty easy, but then the adjustment is uh, usually where people have problems. So that. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, so it's, it's the. Um, the materials is, is often where people have issues. So here, if I select this and then go to edit and place, and then I can select the extrusion and go to edit extrusion to change the shape. So remember I said we want that to be 100 mil from the top and the bottom. So I can select that line and I'll show you a few different ways. We could use the dimension to change it, of course, which works if you have that. But if you don't have it, well, firstly, if I was going to use that option, I could change that to 200, which would bring it down 100 mil. But if you don't have that, you can just select the line and click the Move button, click a base point, move it in the direction you want, and then type 100. Enter. That works. Another option is using the Offset tool. And then I'll type in 100 here that I want it to move, and I'll turn copy off. So when I pick this line, instead of copying it, it's got to move it. So I pick the line, and there we are. It's moved it 100 mil. So I'll finish that, and then again the 3D view, just so you can see it, I'll finish it again. So I've got the shape I want, and now I want to give it a nice matte black material. So, this is, like I said, where lots of people have problems. The guy I was speaking to on the weekend is one of the smartest people I know, and um, and he couldn't remember this, even though he's using Revit all the time. Uh, most people are the same. So the issue is, when you go to assign a material, you'll select it, look in properties, there's no option to set the material. Go to edit type, still no option to set the material. So what do you do? Do you remember? No. 
the button's there. There's only one right answer. <laughs> edit in place, up the top. That's what everyone forgets. Okay, so you have to go back to edit the object you've made. So select it, and then we have to go back to edit in place to assign the material. So if I do that, and it, it's perfectly logical, there's a reason. If we go to edit in place, then we can select the extrusion. And you might be thinking, well, there's only one thing there, why do we have to select it again? But it's because you'll have often multiple extrusions and other objects that you've made as part of that object. So there's no global material for all of those things. You need to be able to select them individually. And that's why you have to go to edit in place. So try to remember that when you're having trouble assigning materials to your made objects, your uh, custom uh, modeled families. Remember, edit in place. And then you need to select again what you've made. In this case, it's an extrusion. And then over here in properties, there's my material. Or the slot for my material. That's what everyone forgets. So here where it says by category, now I can click there and then just go to the browse button next to that that comes up, the one with the dots on it. Not the one next to it, that's for parameters. So the one with the dots. Let's you browse to change the material. If it comes up like this, just remember you can extend that bottom right corner to see all of the settings. And there is a, a map like material already there, but I'm just going to make one for you just to go over that. So often the best way to make a new material is to find one that's similar to what you want. So there's a metal material there. So I'm going to start with that. Right click, go to duplicate. And we're going to call it metal matte black. But no one remembers the name. There was a band called that, Matt Black. But probably no one remembers. Um, and then, uh, this is a long time ago, but I knew the bass player. So here we go to appearance, and then again, right click. Oh, Matt Finch, not Matt Black. Anyhow, so here we go, right click on appearance, and then uh, go to replace. Now, duplicate would work as well, but you have to do something there. So when you're making materials, try to always think about the, the appearance tab as well as graphics, both of those tabs, are the important ones. And keep an eye out for this number here. If you see a number, start to worry because there shouldn't be a number there except zero. So the three there, that's a really worrying sign. It's telling you there are three other materials linked to this one. So that's what that's what that means. The hand means they're shared. Okay, and we don't want that. So by right clicking, again, either duplicate or replace is going to get around that problem. So I'll use replace, and I'm going to go to appearance, double click, then metal, and you'll see we've got all these metal materials, which are which are good. But, looking at the, and, and in fact, this would be pretty close to what is there in reality, but let's have a look at it again. Um, do you know what sort of uh, finish they'd have usually on, a, on uh, this sort of metal? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, powder coated. Yeah, usually. So, if it's powder coated, powder, powder coating is, is basically a type of plastic. So, that's really what's on the surface. Even though it is metal, it's got this plasticky sort of finish. So, Sometimes it's better go to go to the plastic folder. Can you oh, yeah, of course, you can make a different. Yeah, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get a maybe low gloss black to start with, and then I'll make it even more. I'll, I like matte. So uh, they don't have a matte one though, so I'm going to get uh, low gloss. There's the coarse, but I don't, I don't want texture either. So. Uh, again, I'm just going to go for again low gloss black. So you double click, and that puts it into the appearance slot. Close this. So there's my plain low gloss black. But there, I'm going to change the finish 
to man. That's it. So back on the graphics tab though, that's the appearance bump, but I'm going to go back to graphics and now I'm just going to click or tick uh, use render appearance to pick up the same colour that I had on the appearance tab. I love making it confusing with different names, but render appearance basically is appearance. So that's it. Okay. And oh, there, this, sorry, I know what's happened. Again, another little bug with 2018. Uh, I've made the material and I did everything right, but sometimes it doesn't pick it up. But don't panic because it doesn't, you don't lose the material, it's just not a sign. So if you come back and do it again, in other words, just click Browse. You don't need to make the material again. It'll be there. So you just need to make sure it's selected. Click OK. And there we are. So it's just repeating that step. So again, just to remind you, Browse again. Make sure it's selected and click OK. And that fixes it. There we are. So finished model. And we've got the awning. Let's see. Maybe just... Very quick thing, at that point you might want to make a camera view. See how it's all looking in perspective. Is that a realistic? There we are. So I'll give a minute to try that. 